how are you? It's uh, Wednesday in the Woods, and today we're going to be talking about replication and repeatability. You see, one of the most important things that we can do in any kind of scientific endeavor, whether it's in academia or industry, is to ensure that our measurements and our calculations are repeatable. And one of my favorite historical examples of, of our um, advances in this area is the camera. So this is a camera that's actually 3D printed. All the parts other than the aluminum are 3D printed. And even the aluminum has a CAD diagram, a, a schematic or a reproducible set of instructions with an M file that would allow you to machine the aluminum and to 3D print the parts so that we can take a single design and produce the object over and over again. Similarly, this lens is a World War II uh, aerial surveillance lens. Mm -hmm. And the lens allows us to capture a footprint of the Earth beneath us uh, in some kind of wavelength or wavelengths. And this allows us to take repeatable measurements, right? Instead of hand sketching something, we can fly an aircraft up at a known altitude and take a picture under specific, for example, aperture and exposure time under constant lighting conditions. This allows us to take repeated or replicable measurements of some kind of environment or some, some piece of land. And let's talk through that last example. One of the important things is not just to create devices that can support measurement that can be replicated, but also to document, for example, the settings, if you will, the parameters of our model, the, um, the order in which we took pictures or any of these things that could be translated very easily into a data science workflow. So for example, if we collect data in order to build a model, well, collecting that data is just like taking pictures with this lens. So it's very important that when we collect the information, we record our position or where we were, where we got the data, including, for example, the, the complete provenance that our organization needs or any licensing information. It's also important that we know the settings. So for example, if you think of the aperture and exposure time here as um, the settings or the pre-processing on our data when we collect it or initially um, do some kind of transformation to it, then it's critical that we record that information as well. Let's say you're scraping a website, a very simple example, or capturing information from an API. If you don't know what parameters you pass to the API, you don't know what day you retrieve the data from the website. You don't know what terms of use the website has, or you remove some outliers from the information but don't know how you remove the outliers, then it's gonna be very difficult for you to replicate whatever comes downstream from that information, whether it's just some kind of reports or whether it's a machine learning model, anything like that. So replication is key, not just to science broadly, but also to any of our applications of computation or measurement in industry. So it's a, such an important point. And when we do things the right way, we unlock, for example, the ability to um, build in, incredible models, uh, both in the physical world and in the digital world. So I hope when you start out on your next project, you take this message to heart and you, from the very beginning, ensure that what you do is replicable. Now, there's a lot of um, ML ops, machine learning ops frameworks these days. Maybe we'll talk about those sometime later. But anyway, I hope you're having a nice day, staying warm, and we'll see you next week on Wednesday in the Woods.